Welcome to the Vibrant Living Network. Have you ever wondered what is possible beyond possible? What is the thing you've been wondering and inquiring about? Are you just feeling stuck and don't know why? Are you thinking or are you seeing? Seeing allows us to expand and have this other experience. We want to invite you for that wake-up call. We want to invite your spirit, your soul, so to be more alive, more connected. Glenn Brooks has been a life coach for over 33 years, author of Divorced to Patterns, Not Each Other, an explorer of what is possible. He has worked with people all around the world. Join us for a wake-up conversation, a dialogue with you. We will have some of the most interesting contributors. We will be talking to some of the most interesting people and have some of the most resourceful teachers, wisdom-filled people from around the world join us. Share your voice, ask the questions, become free of the known into a new world of possibility. We are going to talk about all the things you wonder about, how to live, how to heal, how to connect, how to love, how to be seen. Your life is precious. Enjoy it. Well, good afternoon. Welcome to Vibrant Living. I hope you're ready to come out of the horizontal into the vertical, into the spirillic. You know, we, we're very focused on our linear way of linear way of thinking, but there's another whole way of using your brain and noticing and listening. I want you to share with you guys. I want to welcome you to the program. I'm so happy to have Kai Cole back. She was deeply missed in her travels around Mexico. Kai, are you there? Yes, thank you. God, it's good hearing your voice on the air today. I wanted to, I wanted to just share something because it really struck me. In 1989, Dr. Dean Ornish called me. He's a cardiologist. He wrote the first book on reversing heart disease. The first significant breakthrough in the field came from Dr. Dean Ornish in 1989, and uh, it was documentation that through diet and exercise and groups and things. He didn't know exactly, he didn't know the, he didn't know the emphasis. He didn't know what to focus on, but he was doing these groups. And he called me, he told me he was a student of uh, Swami Satchitananda, yogi in New York. And he sent me this book and we had a really good conversation. And that, his work went on to become pretty famous. Um, so after about 25 years, I wanted to give you guys the essence of this because after 25 years, this is what he, what he's come to in terms of healing. So I want to let you guys in on the secret. In a moment, we have a, we have a, uh, and I also want to welcome Maureen Clary from Natural Awakenings Magazine, our inside demonstrator. She's going to demonstrate with us to teach the people the principle, experience the principle of demonstration in a moment. We're going to get Maureen on. We got Andy Hort, the Green Whisperer. And of course, Ariel Bonberg, his new, his new name just for this program today, homeopath and producer in New York for the Vibrant Living Network. So here's what, here's what Dean came to. Uh, after doing this program for, I think it's been 27 years. Here it is, I'll give it to you. Our intimate life affects everything. Love and intimacy are the, at the roots of what makes us sick and what makes us well. What causes sickness and what brings happiness? What makes us suffer and what leads to healing? I am, not, I am not aware of any other factor in medicine, not diet, not smoking, not exercise, not stress, not genetics, not drugs, not surgery, that has the greatest impact on the quality of our lives, the incident of, of illness and premature death from all causes. Sex is the glue. We're beginning a new show on intimacy and healing and, and vitality at the beginning of the month with Dr. Nicole and Kai and our team. And I just read that, Kai, and I... It just, it just resonated so deep uh, in me because as in my journey as a coach, I, I met someone and I had the skin condition and, my, and just being around her, my skin condition went away. It was my first experience when I when I was a teenager and I ate pizza, my face looked like a pizza. And no one ever told me that. No one ever made the connection. But when I had love in my life, things shifted. That's why I I, I realized relational coaching was going to be so fundamental. And then also I realized that beyond an so-called empowerment, the most relevant thing is really our, our, our sense of relational power and intimacy. This series on, on being paid for who we are and the power of collaboration, I get to kind of share with you all the people over the years that have touched me, changed the quality of my life, impacted the process, and also showed me stuff I just didn't have a clue about. 
So, Kai, if you had asked me like three years ago about, you know, greenness, Kai, Maureen, and Ariel, if you asked me about greenness and printing, I would say, well, as far as I know, there's soy ink. You know, that was the standard. Or there's this. I really didn't, I really didn't know. And then I, I, I met the Green Whisperer. So I want to introduce you to the Green Whisperer. The Green Whisperer, his family business for 100 years was in printing. Talk about families here. So he, he's, in, he's in, a, in a family that has 100 years of printing, and he starts to see that he wants to implement not just a green manufacturing model, but to bring this to people in a way that the workers could really kind of sink in. Uh, he put the workers first. He created a model for human beings to thrive in a business so they could experience a, uh, a sense of unity and, and, uh, and stability. You know, when, he, when, when it came time to maybe move the business out of New York City at half the price, he chose to keep his business in the city for the stability and the connection and the family-like feeling this business has. His father, who, you know, ran this business for so many years, encouraged him. I There's a lot of family energy in this. A lot of, um, you know, we think about it. I think what, what changed my life wasn't my immediate family. It was people that I met that saw me as a family member and passed that vision to me. Because if we, could we think about the difference between the experience of family is someone that sees us beyond the graven images, the usual things, when they see us in an unscripted way. I met Andy Hort. He saw me immediately as a family member. And then we put our first speakers event. One of our speakers events together, Unscripted Power. He mailed me the greenest fries ever, fries I could pretty much eat if I ran out of food. People would call me to tell me how beautiful they are. He's become a vibrant speaker. He's part of the Vibrant Speakers International. And I want to welcome you, Andy, to the airways here fun. today. And here you are. Here I am. So glad to be talking to you again. It's always such a pleasure to be on your show. Thank you. I want to introduce you to Kai Cole. Kai's become a, a significant vibrant family member. And you know, she's, she's in the city. I want you two to meet each other in person. And Kai, I, I tell you there's a similarity, but Kai's not just in a physical architect. She knows how to work with buildings. She knows how to work with people's beliefs, what brings them a sense of home and connection in their physical structure, in their branding. Her work is just, you know, I see you guys as, as kindred souls. So I want to welcome you to Kai. I want to welcome you to Maureen Clary, the publisher. And a visionary. She's a, Maureen went from being a, a bank president or bank in the banking industry. I mean, you're a bank, bank vice president. And she saw this vision of doing a magazine. Was it a vice president? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. I didn't want. I didn't want. You know. Yeah. Um, uh, well. <laughs> so well, in, in a sense, we in a sense we got this little. We we got Ariel, uh, homeopath. He had a vision for for helping people with natural medicine. He's 26. And uh, so, Andy, open this world. Open this gateway, because you really you really impacted me. After I spoke to you, literally my world went from like I thought I know a little bit about green, and then you just really opened up. You took all the assumptions and conclusions. But I, I didn't know that I had, and you were like, here, here. And you kind of handed them to me, and I'm better for it, and my business is better for it, and I know a lot of people I was able to touch because of you. So what would you want to share with people about being the green whisperer and bringing this into the real world and a real business and only making a difference? I know that's close to your heart. It is. It really is close to my heart. You know, I had an advantage over everyone else is that – I knew the business in that I, – and I actually love saying this. I'm a printer like my father before he and his father before he and his father before he. And I started in a family business when I was seven, running plates up and down on Varick Street. So I knew the business. But what I didn't know was necessarily you know, what went into the inks, what went into the paper. And I started this journey of learning as much as I could – about being green. I really try to live my life of leave nothing but footprints, take nothing but pictures. And um, with my four kids, I live in the Greenwich Village. I ride my bicycle everywhere to keep my carbon footprint low. We try to use no plastic bags in our family and just everything in our life. Um, we try to be as green as we can. Living in New York City, we compost. We do everything we possibly can think of. Mm -hmm. But I was really wanted to learn more about my business and what went into the inks, what went into the paper, what went into our water, what went into our plates. And I spent a 
couple years learning everything I could. And the one thing that I learned is you can't believe the marketing. Mm -hmm. That marketing is extremely powerful and little things like soy-based inks sound awfully nice. And I'd heard the term soy-based inks for years and I believed that they were a greener product. And I remember even specking soy-based mm -hmm. inks on a job thinking I was being all green. But in my research, in my time, in my talking to many people, I learned that it's honestly just a farce. Um, just to tell you a little about soy-based inks, just so you can hear the farce that it was, is if you go back about 30 years ago, inks had linseed oil in them. My son uses that for keeping his baseball glove uh, moist and leather nimble. Mm -hmm. And uh, someone figured out that you could replace the soy with uh, the linseed oil with the soy and was cheaper and uh, dried quicker. And soy-based inks were born. They still had VOCs. They still had solvents. They still had heavy metals. They still had 25% petroleum products. All they did was replace a vegetable-based oil with a vegetable-based oil. And as we all know, soy is something that is overproduced right now. They're trying to shove it into everything they can, and they started shoving into our inks. And I learned it wasn't what what they were putting into the ink that mattered. It's what they were it, – it, excuse me, it wasn't the one thing that they were putting into the ink. It's all those other things that they weren't mentioning. It's the VOCs, it's the solvents, it's the petroleums, it's the heavy metals. And I learned that there were these inks out there, which we've been using for probably 10 years now, which are vegetable-based inks. They're you know, 40 to 50% vegetable oil, no VOCs, no solvents, no heavy metals, no petroleum products, and are completely biodegradable. They, there were real inks, but it was not what was the one thing that was in there. It's what else wasn't in there. And, and that's a hard logo to put on. It's easy. Soy-based ink, that's an easy logo, but it's hard to say a logo, say, no VOC, no solvents, no heavy metals, biodegradable. Um, that's a much harder, longer logo to put on. And right. I kept on finding more and more examples of this. You know, recycled paper is one. Sounds awfully good. But, you know, yes. just because paper is recycled doesn't mean it's better for the environment at all. The paper that we buy here at Earth Enterprise you know, we have a plant in New Jersey, and we have a sales office in New York. Uh, about 65% of the paper that we buy here at Earth Enterprise comes from New York State, locally sourced. You know, we all remember when organic was the thing, and everyone was mm -hmm. going organic, and that's kind of died out. And now everyone's into local vor. Same thing with our paper. We try to buy locally sourced paper. We try to buy paper from New York that's been um, – forested in the Adirondacks. Adirondacks is a really healthy forest. And if you forest correctly, it is actually very healthy for the forest. Um, I do a little gardening, and I know that if I prune my garden, my garden comes back healthier. The same thing. If you cut down 15% of your forest every 20 to 25 years, it maintains the size of your forest. Because the forest grows approximately 15% every 20, 25 years. So you're basically keeping your forest the exact same size, and it's healthy for the forest. Um, so there's lots of things, but the one thing, to answer your question, this is my long-winded way of answering your one question, is don't believe the marketing. Just because it sounds good that we mm -hmm. have the ability right now with the Internet to really look into things, to really understand that I had an advantage because I had a industry behind me and I had friends within the ink and ink business and had friends in the paper business. And I actually spent a couple of days with a forester up in upstate New York just to learn what he did. Um, and I really researched it. And over five years, I came to the conclusion that a lot of what this marketing was, was just malarkey. What's striking you, Kai? What are you, what are you curious about? I am enamored by Andy's research and also by his conclusions. I think that it is so important for us to at least peel back the first layer. I mean, Andy has peeled back probably probably about two dozen layers of truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but yeah. it, it is. It's extremely important to have an understanding of where we are sourcing things from and where they're coming from. 
um, or else, you know, we really don't have an, any idea what they are made of to begin with. So thank you for shedding some light on that, Andy. Mm -hmm. Maureen. Um, yeah, I know a few years ago, uh, we called it greenwashing when I was seeing mm -hmm. companies just, just tossing green onto their name of their business, green landscaping, green food, mm -hmm. you right, know, right. just yes, because yes. that was the, the newest buzzword. And it sounds yes. like you've done probably about the exact opposite of that with all of your research, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, you just, I don't think that happens very often. That people take the time mm. and the dedication to getting to that, mm. you know, core yeah. of of what it is that you're using. That that's fabulous. But greenwash really is the word that people think. Oh, green this oh, must be better for the environment, and people mm -hmm. are willing and they spend extra money on it. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's better, and sometimes it's not better. And as you said earlier, really, if you just peel back the first layer, I think you'll have more fun, you'll find it interesting, you'll learn more, and you really do something that you believe in. You know, it kind of reminds me, Andy and uh, Maureen, Kai, Ariel, there's a lot of hype as an example in the, the so-called holistic dental movement. And one of the things they came up with a very invasive procedure called a cavitation where they kind of dig deep to get this hidden infection and people spend a lot of money. And the truth of the matter is, is that it could be, for some people, it could be sort of disastrous, but the model, the holistic model sometimes, I could see you got to really inquire because something could sound really good, you know, but it, in some sense it could be too much or invasive, but that's, so it, I love the, I love this idea of inquiry and getting to, to what's real. I know you talked about coffee cups one time to me, and you said some. You shared something about the coffee cups. Weren't, what did you share with your coffee cups? Because you were you look at this at every level, and you shared something about the coffee cups that was kind of like, oh, I hadn't considered that before. Who? Like, I I thought you had told me something about coffee cups that you were because it seemed like every part of your business you were inquiring. Okay, what's the Oh, uh, you don't need coffee cups. It was water, water cups. Thank you. It was Thank water. you. Thank you. It was yeah. water. It took me a few minutes. Yeah. Yeah. That a yeah. client came to me and complained why we had styrofoam water cups in our conference room. And they yeah. said, you're all green. Why would you have styrofoam? And I said to them, yeah. someone before me bought a thousand styrofoam cups. And the the marketing green thing to do would be to throw those away and buy yeah. a more environmental water cup for our clients that come in that want water. That would be the environment. That would be the good marketing thing to do. But I think the yeah. right thing to do is to at least use the styrofoam cups that were bought. And when they're and when they're not used, <laughs> then I will replace them. But just to throw them away seemed like the, right, the right. bigger waste. And the, the client was taken back and I think really appreciated my answer that I actually had given thought yeah. to why we had styrofoam cups in our office, though we called ourselves a green printing company. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that is true. Yeah. That it's, not, it's, the, it's not just about the marketing that, you know, that people come to me and say, you know, I want to do something and laminate it. And laminate it means put plastic on it. And I said, if yes. you're putting plastic on it and you're doing it for longevity – and you're doing it so you want it to last for a long time, that's completely reasonable. That that actually is smart because mm. if you want mm. something to last, that we want to protect it, something that's going to be used for years and years and years. Um, we do this project for the United Nations. It is um, We do it for uh, – it's how to put on a condom, and they distribute it throughout Africa. We do millions of them every year, and they do it on this paper that is unrippable um, – Tyvek that basically water won't damage it, nothing will damage it. And the reason why they wanted it on this paper is because it's going to Africa where it's very wet. They wanted people passing it down to generation to generation and lasting mm -hmm. a long time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, to do that on – and that is a reasonable way of using something to last a long time. And if you do that, I believe it is a, a, green, a green way to do something that people say to me. Right. How do you make something green? You make something green by making what you uh, are doing. We're, we're going to come back with more. We're going to come. We're going to continue. We're going to continue with more green wisdom. That's all right. Andy Hort, the Green Whisperer. 
part of Vibrant Speakers International. We got uh, Maureen Clary. She's gonna, we're going to produce a miracle with her today. And you're going to be able to be part of it. And of course, Kai Cole, so happy she's back. Ariel Bonberg, he likes pressure. Stay with us. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Ohm Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. In the wake of a disaster, what one thing can you send that will help people the most? A blanket, a tent, a sandbag, a doctor. Actually, if you send a monetary donation, you send all these things. Even a small donation can make a big impact and can quickly become exactly what people affected by disaster need most. In the wake of a hurricane, your monetary donation can make a huge difference to those in need. To donate, visit supporthurricanerelief.org. That's supporthurricanerelief.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. You're listening to Vibrant Living. I'm Glenn Brooks, along with Kai Cole, my co-presenter at Harvard University. Upcoming conference we're going to be at on movement, cognition, the brain. I'm talking to Andy Hort. He's the green whisperer on our Vibrant Living, our Vibrant Speakers International. His message is about greenness and authenticity, bringing up to your business, to your workplace. Andy, why don't you say something about the environment of the workplace? Because obviously what you're talking about it, it goes right. You're, you you work across all fields, and and uh, and you're going to be at this conference we have upcoming in uh, in Rhode Island. Comment about how this impact this green awareness impacted your how you work with your workers because we've had this conversation and it's so inspiring. How you to me how you transmit it into the workplace. What would you want to say about the workplace greenness and prosperity for the for the for the whole collective? Well, I don't know about the greenness, uh, though we do try to make a green environment um, for our mm-hmm. our employees here in New York City that all new hires have to promise to either ride their bicycles or take public transportation to get to work. I don't want to add mm-hmm. any cars into New York City. But, you know, I really think of the mm-hmm. people that I work with as my family. And when I die, God willing, years and years years from now, one thing I hope people say about us, that our employees stay with us. We have very, very little turnover. Um, people that have worked for us have worked for us for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, and that's the way we like it. We are very comfortable with the people that we're with, and when you're with us, you really are family. Um, that One thing that you mentioned, that our lease was up in New York City. We were being uh, kicked out by a WeWorks that was moving in. And New York City wanted us to move to uh, the Brooklyn Navy Yards. And Westchester was offering us a nice package. And New Jersey, the uh, rents were very, very attractive. But we really felt like the only way to keep our family together was to stay right here in Manhattan. So we have some people from Westchester that can come in. People from New Jersey Mm -hmm. can come in. We have employees from Long Island and Staten Island and Brooklyn, that this was the center. So though it might not have been the most financially correct decision, we believe in the long run 
it's the most financially correct decision because I believe you're never going to be good without great employees that are loyal to you, that work hard for you. And I believe that good employees are as good as a good client. And with those good employees, we're all able to stay together. And we got ourselves a little bit tighter. Everyone's a little bit closer, but we're all pretty mm-hmm. friendly, so it's all good. We took a little bit less mm-hmm. space, and we took some space in New Jersey for some storage, and we were able to mm-hmm. work it out financially. And I think in the long run, we're so much better off by keeping everyone together and keeping our family together and, and moving into 2018 and beyond as a group of professionals that know the business, that care about the business. And it's not – and that's the environment that I would want, want to live in. You know, all I want in this world – is for my children to be happy, and and after that, everyone else to be happy around me. I want good in this world, and if if, if you want good in this world, good things come to you. I honestly believe that because people want to associate with good. I, you know, I don't really believe yeah. in good people versus bad people. There are definitely some people I don't want to associate with, but most people mm-hmm. want good in this world. Most people want. Mm-hmm. You know, most I, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to a meeting and said, "Do you care about the environment?" Because I care about the environment, and no one has said, "No, I don't care about the environment at all." <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> that, that, that people want good, and people want to associate with good. And I think that if you you know try to live your life honestly, and not lie, and work hard, and try to you know show people a good environmental way, and make yourself a good product. In the end, you're going to be successful. You know, I, I keep your head down and do a good job and make people happy and work hard and do good. Th- that's really the environment that I like to live in. That and ride my bike around New York City as much yes. as possible because that's really what makes me happy. I love riding my bike. I know you I do. love that. And you know, I, I, I want to say I'm so happy to be part of the Byron Living family and, uh, you know, your energy. When I get my box of flyers from you and I, I – I show them to people. It's just it's like showing them an art piece, and I I I can feel the love and the and the the good work, and it's uh, it, it, you know one of the things I realize relationally is that I think it was, there's a Danish guy who just wrote a book on the the dark side of self improvement in the United States, and he was just saying that people get so preoccupied with themselves, and I think what's missing is this: we need each other, and we need each other to energize our vision. And connect, and that's why we're doing this series on the power of collaboration, or as I, as I would also call it, the the infinite collaboration, going beyond going beyond barter and trade, and really seeing that you're actually passing on this invisible energy, if you will. Give out, give out, give out your website, Andy, and um, thanks. It's just an honor catching up with you today. Uh, it's Earth like the planet, EarthEnterprise dot com, E A R T H Enterprise, E N T E R P R I S E. Dot com, EarthEnterprise.com. I spent a lot of time putting a lot of really good information on it. We have a section on the environment, and I wrote three white papers to really describe our feelings about the environment and what's, really, what's true about printing and the environment, um, digital versus the environment. People say email is better than, than printing. I'd say read my white papers. You'll find it interesting. It's not as clear-cut as okay. one might think. Um, and let me just add one more thing, Glenn. I'm so looking yeah. forward to your to seeing you in both Rhode Island and in New York um, for the Vibrant Living Conference and being part of that. I'm really excited about it. There'll be a special place for your, your bike and, um, of course, in my heart. I'm, <laughs> you're one of the people that I've uh, <laughs> We have a special bike riding team up there for sure. And I, uh, I'm glad uh, Maureen's here because I just have this love affair with Rhode Island. So this is, this is a fulfillment of uh, my love affair with Rhode Island. So... Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Glenn. We'll speak to you soon. Enjoy. Enjoy. Nice enjoy to talk to all tonight. of you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Listening to Vibrant Living, I'm Glenn Brooks, Kai Cole, our uh, architect, ambassador of uh, of subtlety. Uh, Kai listens at a very deep, subtle level. So, a lot of subtlety with Kai. It's really. I just want to say that my brain. I did a series on the relational brain. Maureen and Ariel and Kai and I, I did it. I did it with a. Uh, he's one of the renowned people studying brain plasticity. The relational brain is the quickest way to open up your brain to creativity and and another whole level. 
and I learned recently that I, I live in the lateral, lateral thinking a lot. I realized that it, to, to share that with people and to go beyond the differences, and here's, here's collaboration. I read a book like 20 years ago called The Secret Science Behind Miracles because I, I was always curious what people called a miracle. What was it? How did it occur? You know, when I was, when I was 18, I was hitchhiking, and I was pondering this idea of miracles, and this guy pulled a knife on me. And I, I kind of had this notion that we're connected to this inf infinity mind. We're, there's a bigger mind, and we're all connected there. And in that moment, I had, he pulled a knife. I just had the sense that we were connected, and he was crying out for help. And I just remember the moment passed, and it was like I dropped out of time, and he put his knife away, let me out. And I just remember, like, it, on one level, I got out of the car, and I was really scared. But on another level, I, I, there's, there's this infinity, this relational aspect that's so profound. So when I met you, Maureen, I, I kind of felt you were part of this web. And I thought, yeah, let's bring this to – let's bring Vibrant Matchmaking and the Vibrant Living Summit. So I want to say the first thing about miracles is the beginning of a miracle is when two people agree. So the first thing is, and I've talked to many, you know, I've talked to world-renowned, like, surgeons. I always, I say to them, I say, what is the thing? When you see a patient or a client, like, what is the thing? And it always comes down to this agreement. You know, Dr. Nick Gonzalez, who passed away, I love Nick so much. And Nick told me, as a world-renowned oncologist, he wouldn't let people leave the first visit until he felt they, they had faith in their bones. He said that was the most significant thing. And he told me one day, he said there was a billionaire that came to see him. And the guy came with a whole bunch of doctors and security and, you know, <laughs> whole team. And he was traveling the world to meet someone and to help him with this, this diagnosis of cancer. And, and Nick was pretty renowned for pancreatic cancer, helping people. And he told me this guy did not sink his, his he didn't sink his toes into faith. And Nick was really concerned. And he said the same day he met this architect, same diagnosis. That guy was alive 20 years later. The, the billionaire had passed away. So the, the power of collaboration or infinite collaboration is when you both agree and you realize something bigger is now occurring. If you will, you're on, you're on a cosmic boat ride. You, you've entered to another equation that is Dr. Larry Dossi says. He has a beautiful book called Beyond the Local Mind. So here we are, Maureen, with you, Rhode Island. I thought to myself one day, I thought, you know, it's so obvious. I have this great connection, Maureen. I love Rhode Island. Um, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the Vibrant Living Summit, but I'm also curious if any of you want to comment on Andy or any 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 of your feedback on what Andy said about his green business or anything. Kai, if you yeah, had anything absolutely. you wanted to share. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ariel. Go ahead, Ariel. Yeah. Uh, so, I I besides the fact that what Andy is doing is is obviously wonderful for the environment. I actually yeah. re really resonate with Andy's work because as a yeah. holistic practitioner myself, you know, you meet a lot of different uh, clients and people in general who send that things, who, who they, have, they have this idea of what organic is, what holistic medicine is, all these different health and wellness terms that we use. And unfortunately, due to, you know, a variety of factors, mainly ignorance, we don't, we don't always, we think something is one thing when it's really another. Um, yes. To bring this point out, so I actually someone actually showed me a article that showed that one of Whole Foods uh, vegetable products was labeled as organic, all natural, non GMO. Yeah. Um, but the funny thing is when you look at the when you look at the behind the package, it says it's made in in China. And if you do, and these uh, researchers did a little mm -hmm. bit more research and they discovered how this product is actually from this disgusting one of the disgusting rundown parts of China where it's not at all organic, mm. there's pesticides used. Mm. And, mm. you know, the point I'm trying to get is that I really resonate with this word because Andy tries to really show what, you know, what's the true meaning of, of going green and preserving the environment mm. and not harming our environment and what really works and what doesn't work in that respect. And as a whole practitioner and an educator too, I, you know, I, I really connect with that because I try to show my, the people I work with, you know, what is true holistic medicine? What's true natural medicine? What's natural health? What's holistic health? You know, a lot of people go, jump into different modalities, different types of lifestyles, thinking it's one thing, but it's really the complete opposite. If it, for example, like many people will will use herbal medicine. And again, I love herbal medicine. Mm -hmm. I'm pro-herbal yes. medicine. I have nothing against it. Or, you know, certain parts, certain types of naturopathic 
naturopathy and modality. But the funny part is people people use this thinking that it's holistic, it addresses the entire person, and it really doesn't. And it's more of an allopathic uh, approach as well. So mm-hmm. I I really, really support what Andy's doing, and it is something as a practitioner I really connect with. I just want to... That. I hope yeah, that's beautiful. That What's your blog? Well, well, you're gonna you're, you're gonna meet Andy, and Andy's gonna be. I want you to go meet him in person, and you too, Kai and, and Maureen. What's your blog? What's your health blog? Why don't you give out? You have a beautiful blog. You share a lot of stuff on your blog. How, how, how can people yeah. find your blog? Yeah. So, my, so like what Glenn said, I run a natural health blog that does exactly that, where we we try to give, objectively explain, you know, different topics in natural health, holistic healing, homeopathy. Um, integrative medicine, et cetera, lifestyle, uh, fitness, nutrition. Uh, so, 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 you know, it's a really resourceful blog. I use this for my clients, and I and this blog attracts now, thank God, uh, over 12 to 13,000 visitors and growing. And it's a really good resource to anyone that wants to learn more about, you know, the, these topics. Uh, the name of the website is naturalholistichomeopathic.com. It's natural, N-A-T-U-R-A-L. Holistic, H-O-L-I-S-T-I-C, and homeopathic, which is H-O-M-E-O-P-A-T-H-I-C, uh, dot com, all one word. You log mm-hmm. on, and, you know, there's a wide variety of natural health and holistic and wellness topics you can look up, and you can educate yourself, in, and you can use that resource to better help yourself, your friends, your family, et cetera. That's beautiful. So, uh, thank you, Ariel. Um Pleasure. So, Maureen, I, I, yeah, pleasure. That was great. I, uh, you know, I just want to say that meeting someone like you, Maureen, when I would, when I would go to health shows, and I'm sure Kai's, Kai's gone to a lot of conventions and centers, the most beautiful thing I have found is that little, the part in the day when you meet someone in a hallway or you, you know, you, you kind of have an ex, uh, exhale and you meet someone and it, it really, it's that connection. And so I kind of designed a Vibrant Living Summit that would incorporate Vibrant Speaking. So Vibrant Speaking is all about um, – I've worked with – I've developed a way to help people with speaking and listening, listening to the listening. that kind of also changes their body and changes the way they breathe, and it puts them in touch with this sense of play and wonder. We often play with people's names. You know, we kind of – people come and we play with them on who they really want to – what the message really is from, you know, when you were in school and you wanted to say something and you, you felt it in your heart and the teacher says, not now, you got to raise your hand. Like, we probably put them in touch with this other level. And with Vibrant Speakers International, I have the honor of working with all these people who really just want to let that, that deep, vital sensation come out and to be around others who want to speak from that vital sensation without scripting, uh, without rehearsing. And so we got, we got our Vibrant Living Speakers there. We do a lot on vibrant medicine. So the medicine, you see, part of what Andy's doing is very medicinal. You know, when we're in community, um, we have vibrant movement. We have some some of the more interesting. I never shared this with publicly, but I met a quantum. I'm trying to think what he was. He was a, he had some kind of um, maybe he was a physicist. He was a physicist. Oh, I guess I got to continue. We're going to continue with uh, being paid for who we are. Here on the Vibrant Living Network, Maureen, Maureen Clary is our honors part of our team. She's with us from Rhode Island, Knock Awakenings Magazine. Ariel Bonberg, his new energized super name for the show. Hi, Cole. <laughs> love it. Hey, I knew you'd love that. Uh, yeah, of course you do. Stay with us. Precious, we call each other precious names. We produce a different life together. We summon that aspect of the other person. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. 
I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. Hey, Dr. Phil here. You know, I help people solve difficult problems every day, but one problem has me stumped, childhood hunger. Nearly 16 million children in America struggle with it. Luckily, the Feeding America network of local food banks collects surplus food, giving hope to hungry children and their families. But they need your help. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. You're listening to Vibrant Living, along with Kai Cole, Ariel Bonberg, Maureen Clary, National Kings Magazine. You know, there's a question on, on Passover, the holiday Passover. I love this question. The question is, what makes this, di- you know, what makes this different? What makes this night different than all the nights? What makes this this dinner? What makes what makes this different? It's a powerful question. You know. I learned this in my body. I would start to, I'd be driving or something and I would feel, I would feel something and I would invite that sense in, that sensation in. Like, what is it? Take a right, take a left. I would, I would invite that in. Like, what is it that, what, what makes this moment different? Like, what makes this equation more re really different? So I already feel like it's incorporated and I feel the same thing with Ariel and Kai. I, I kind of live with them as a part of life. So I kind of feel when I'm up to something, I'm representing them. I'm seeing them. It's kind of like a different, if you can imagine, you're seeing for the whole village. So um, with Kai and Ariel here, Maureen, I have this vision of being in Rhode Island and, and doing the vibrant matchmaking and, and doing our summit. I just want to, I want to ask, I want to ask you your highest vision of this summit that's going to come to Rhode Island to touch the lives. By the way, the food program in Rhode Island, their food program is almost, it's fantastic. They have a, I, they're the, the, the food banks and what they're doing in Rhode Island is incredibly innovative. I've been very, I've actually had people on from Rhode Island. I, it's one of my favorite beach spots. So I, I, I want to ask, what's your vision for the Vibrant Living Summit and why you're moved by it? It's a big question. Uh, yeah, it is. That's a pretty big question. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, you can take it one chunk at a time. I just wanted to, you know, it's funny. You know what my teacher said the other day? He says, when, you, when you're into something, just focus the, the end of it. So he says, don't think about the details of getting married. Just be in the marriage. So if there's one thing that moves you about this gathering where people just, are just, you know, experience vibrancy and they can bring this in their lives and we'll, you know, and it's a kind of a container for all the, all the wonderful work that you've been doing at Natural Awakenings of bringing people together to experience more vibrancy and connection and make this a way of life. That's, that's the vision I have with you. And that's what I share with Kai and Ariel that it's really you. I just, I have a connection with you, Maureen. We have a connection with you that it feels like the vibrant living summit is coming home to the home known as Rhode Island with you. Hmm. I like that idea. That's, okay. that's, uh, that sounds about right. I also feel Good. a connection with you all as well, so that's uh, it's a full circle connection. That's so good. Thank you. Right back. I never, you. you know, I. What's that, Ariel? I said right back at you, Maureen. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, you know, you know what took me by surprise. I, I want to get. I want to hear your your thought, your your wisdom, Kai. What took me by surprise was a friend of ours, someone that Kai knows as well. Invited me to a party that actually Kai was going to, she was going to be there. And of course, I joked. I'm always joking. I said to her, I said, well, I said, if I don't come to this party, the women are going to cry. I was kind of teasing her. And she goes, Glenn, she goes, the women are going to cry if you don't come to this party. And then I realized my whole life, I, I always felt really excluded. Like I'm sort of the outsider on the, uh, you know, I'm the rebel, whatever I am. And I, I just really, I actually took a few extras and I just felt welled up. I just felt like, Oh my God! People actually really want me to come to this party. Wow! It kind of dropped into my being, and 
I feel the same way about Maureen. I'm, I'm really happy that you said that. I'm really happy that we're in this process, this, this infinite mind together, and we're going to bring something that's so beautiful. And I, how I did this the last time is we held weekly calls, and we had the speakers on, and the process of that was so beautiful. And literally, the listening was so – and that's how I want to do it in Rhode Island. I want to have the speakers come on. I want to build our, our host in Rhode Island. Kai, what's what's in your part of the infinite mind? What are you speaking? What do you what do you what's your say? Yeah, share. I'm actually still thinking about Andy. I think that it was wonderful how he was showing the ways that he was exemplifying his message. And Glenn, I know that is a concept that comes up a lot of times when yes. we speak. Um, you know, yes. he was talking about these you know sustainability and green issues and how he was embodying them in his business and in his being, what really bubbles for me about Mm -hmm. this upcoming summit is to see and experience how you, Glenn, exemplify your message that you share Mm. so often and so generously with us here on the radio. Uh, I would would love to, um, to be able to experience the multitude of ways that you exemplify your message and are there any that you would like to um, to mention at this point in time that mm. you feel will really mm. come across by the time we get to the summit mm. Mm. Yeah, by the way what you re- what you recognize that andy is his exemplification was is what drew me to him he never put the marketing in front he always just shared with me these values these experiences you know I think it's, I think with Maureen is an example. I think it's been the sense of like, I think it's a sense of risking and trusting and really, you know, a lot of times when I, when I reach out to someone, I, I sometimes have a sense, I have a sense that I do have a connection that I've, I've kind of met them before I met them. Um, I love the question, I guess, um, You know, there's a part of the day, or a part, and there's a, there's a vibrant moment, if you will, where I, I sense I need to reach out to someone, and I it's sort of a mystery, and it's also a, a sense of um, like with the film is an is a specific example. There's, in the film, it's called the announcement. The announcement's all about uh, Gordon and Diana Banks. It's about how they were divorced 27 years, they were separated, and they actually marry again. And it's kind of about the physicality of that how that occurs. It's, it's a wonderful, I think it's a wonderful story. And, um, and part of that, I didn't know I was going to be dancing in this film, but I, I've been reaching out to some dancers and I, I think what it is, is this willingness, our engagement to do something that's different or that's kind of awkward or, um, it brings you to this. What's that? It's vulnerable. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm so funny. I was just thinking about vulnerable. Thank you, Maureen. <laughs> yeah, vulnerable. It's like to be thank you so much. No, I mean I I been I think about this guy because I and Maureen, that's so beautiful. Yes, to be vulnerable, to be to kind of stand up on your chair or whatever and just really I remember I was I was doing something in New York City and people stood up and they really were so vulnerable. And I remember being in the room and it was such the room went from like, you know, we were each in our own galaxy and people set up and they were really vulnerable. And uh, yeah, I, I think I love vulnerability. I actually had a, a conversation with a psychiatrist one day and he pulled me aside and he says, you know, when he goes, if the client comes in and they need an exorcism and, and they feel they need an exorcism, he goes, I'll do an exorcism. He goes, I do with bridges to the anthropology, where they live from. So, you know, Kai I, I, uh, and Maureen and Ariel, I... I do I, every day I get up I just I kind of do my best to go beyond my personal mind to to this bigger mind um to be vulnerable yeah I guess to be vulnerable physically emotionally energetically um it's funny you ask me that cuz I I used to do this thing on the radio call it was called vibrant moments and I'd say to people like right now as you're listening to my voice be aware of your hands on the steering wheel be aware of the tension be aware be aware right now. Are you mechanical? Are you like paying attention? Are you, are you are you're sitting? Are you aware? Are you aware that you're sitting? How many doorways did you walk through today? It's this ongoing kind of what's what is vibrancy and how to engage. And sometimes that's totally nonverbal. 
I think what it is, I, I, I do my best to, to play, um, to listen to people about what really profoundly moves them. And also I think, um, you know, I think these gatherings, Ty, I think like being with Maureen and Ariel and you in, in Rhode Island and kind of just, how do you bring something forward that you feel? How do you, how do you like bring it into this physicality is, is, uh, so, yeah, I want to say Andy is an exemplifier, 100%. That's what draws me. Maureen, you know, she took she took a career that she was used to, that she's, you know, she's making money in, all the logical linear things. And she says, you know what? I want to do a whole different mission. Like, to me, that's just like being around exemplifiers is profoundly moving. Ariel, you know, he's he's putting out this genuineness that he's – Yukai, you know, you, you went to school as an architect, but you – you stre- I, I realized when I was an unscripted power, people came from all around the country, whether it was Elaine Gibson, who was told she would pass away. She just turned 71 last week. She was told she had stage, uh, stage, very high, stage four cancer, breast cancer. They said she would pass away. I realized that everyone in the room, whether it was Dr. Bernie Siegel, we all, everyone stretched beyond their degrees. So if you look at Ariel, yourself, Maureen, it's like the vibrancy and the vigor to go beyond the known. It's a powerful thing. How could, it's just, it's so uncommon. We're so, we're so taught to, to, to survive. So I'm, I'm really appreciative of that, Kai, and I'm really appreciative since, you, since I've met you. And by the way, as we both discovered, I met you many, many times. I just didn't know you were in the room or on the phone consciously. I guess I did, actually. <laughs> you were so familiar when I met you. It was kind of like, oh, yeah, of course, Kai. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you know. So, I guess what I what I want to do here is uh, I'm going to write something up. I'm going to send it to Maureen. Maureen, I just want you to. I want to announce it. We'll have some dates, and we're going to share the process of the speakers in the different sections and how people could. You know, my vision for this is that when people come to a vibrant living summit, the deep talk, the book, the new movement of their life will come forward in a different way because they're in relationship. You know, that relational transformation is the next wave that we're in. And it has to do with the relational brain and the relational soul, if you will. And that that being together in that kind of environment is really, you know, it, just just breathing the air together. So it's, or being in Hawaii, they call it the Ohana, which is the family that breathes together. So I'm ecstatic about it. I'm, I'm going to, I'm eager to, uh, you know, it, honestly, you know, it's 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 people. The, the vibrant thing happens when people, when they're vulnerable, Maureen. When people are vulnerable with me, it's just it moves me. I was sitting in the studio one day, and I heard about the Sufi healer, and I, Master Tanner, and he comes to see me. And he's a beautiful man. He comes with his wife. We're in studio, and a few weeks before I met him, there was a a, a man that was dying. It's not his. I'm sorry. This the father's son was dying in California. And Master Tanner told me that the man came to see him to help his son long distance. Because Master Tanner discovered he was a healer when his son broke his leg at a public pond. And he ran his hands over his son's leg and his physical bone healed. How's that for a mind stretch? So this man came to Master Tanner. And Master Tanner just said to him, you know, I want to help your son. He goes, but I need you to, I need you to feel this deeply when you ask for my help. I need you to cry. And the guy started crying, and Master Tanner felt his heart. And the guy was in intensive care, and he came out of intensive care. He, all his vitals came back. I guess I'm just always interested in this. What is the gap between learning styles, how we listen? And in our listening, can we invoke and summon people? Can we speak to them in a, in a, in a way that's beyond the habitual, in a way that is vibrant, that carries this different energy and kind of, Give, give, if you will, give the reverence in our listening to each other, so that we, so that we go beyond the usual. And by the way, see, of course, that's one of the things I'm bringing into the, the what I, when I call it uh, vibrant dating, or <laughs> yeah, you call it vibrant dating. I call it vibrant matchmaking, <laughs> beyond dating to relating. <laughs> and, and I want to say Ariel's so good at this; he always calls it vibrant dating. I think that's a good name, but I don't call it that. But I, I get the good vibe here. And, and you know, Maureen, I want to say. You you intuitively said so many beautiful things about vibrant matchmaking. I thought you picked up on the heart and core 
of some of the superficial questions, like, and you guys, do you have good chemistry? Like, I felt you you got the deeper pulse mm. of what Robert Matzak is. I really love that. You know, um, I yeah. think if I had to the say one thing that, what's that? The irony is that I got matched with my wife, and I still call it dating. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, you got matched, and you still call it dating. Yeah. I'm going to circle back to Kai. Way, I'm just yeah. saying, I think, well, you're matched. I know you're married, so what can I say? I think I, I, personally, I personally think it's the highest vibration on earth. Like being consciously married, the yin and the yang, the, the whole thing is just a, you know, it's just, I feel like I'm more, I'm waking up more into it and appreciating it more and more each moment. And, you know, reading that quote by, by Dean Ornish, I just realized that intimacy is so, you know, the fact you could hold your partner's heart and you could breathe into the heart. I mean, there's another book called The Language of the Heart. And, and it's like one of the things I discovered is the language of the heart, reading this, this work of this guy, is that a lot of couples aren't in the language of the heart. And when you're in the language of the heart, you, you, it's so moving. I want to circle back to you, Kai, because it's beyond my words sometimes. Sometimes it comes to me in a way I can articulate it. And sometimes, you know, as I, I think I told you the story, I went to give a, a talk in Boston. I walked in the room, and I, it was all about being a genius, being a natural genius. And I, the room gave the talk for me. So I think it's this idea that we're in a current of life and that, that as we sink in together, we, we become a catalyst for genius and connection for each other. I had no, I, as an example, I had no idea how to ever make it in a so-called career. I couldn't get that. But one day when I realized I could create my own career, I created a seminar called How to Create Your Own Career. I didn't know that. I did, a lot of stuff I didn't know, Kai. But I, but I started to feel this other quality of vibrancy, and that totally moved, was so moving. And then I found people that secretly would pull me to the side. When I had this cardiologist come to the station, and she told the audience, that when this guy died on the table and she felt really, she felt heartbroken. He came to her that night in his energy body in her living room and had a conversation with her. When she told me that story, so many people came up to me and said, quietly, she said, I got to say something. She goes, when you had that doctor order, she told that story. I couldn't believe how many people said this to me. There's a vibrant currency, I think, this, this vulnerability that when we start to talk and energize it, it becomes real. It becomes like, the hidden conversation we're too scared to access, but yet it has the most vibrancy. I just passed the stick back to you, Kai. That's a pretty profound story. Absolutely. It was. It was. It was a profound moment. I. It was. It was absolutely profound. The audience is profound. You're profound. Maureen, thank you again. And thank you for being part of our vibrant living team. Ariel, Bonbor, you've been amazing today. That was a lot of voltage today with you. <laughs> Kai, welcome back. And de- welcome Good back to my heart. Well, so good, so good having Kai back. Love to Miranda, who's doing our Instagram. And I appreciate you guys. Your life's precious and joy. And of course, Chris and the wonderful people at Home Times Radio for bringing forward our vibrant living radio network. Thank you. Your life's precious and joy. It.